All right, today we're going to do a little bit of polar scope collimation. You can see that we've got our polar scope set up here. Got the light track set up on the wedge. Here I've got a Manfrotto video tripod, which is really stable and convenient. Not necessary, but nice to have. And more importantly, we've got something over at infinity, which we're gonna use to calibrate this scope. So first thing you'll notice, we've got the scope in the adapter and got the swing arm out here. Now your adapter may have six thumb screws or it might have three thumb screws here and then three um, hex head screws or some other type of screw on the, uh, the I guess, distal end here, the one closest to the arm. Uh, either way, it's fine. But what we want to do is adjust these screws until the scope is nice and centered in the adapter. You know, there's a very small gap here, as you can see, and you'll want that to be kind of even all the way around. And then we're not going to touch these far screws. Once that's done, it's done, and we're going to leave them alone. Okay, first things first, we're, wanna, we're going to want to adjust the mount until it's basically horizontal. First thing you want to do is make sure that it's level. And then we will just adjust it. until we're basically orthogonal. It's not uh, super important that it be exactly um, exactly uh, at a right angle. It's going to actually vary based on the object that you're looking through, uh, but chances are that you're going to uh, need it somewhat pointed horizontally. So next thing you want to do is you want to pick out an object. Um, sometimes it can be the corner of a faraway building or in my case one of these trees over here and the important thing is that the point is relatively stationary. Right now you can see there's no wind, the trees aren't blowing around. That building might have worked as well but it, it's not quite as far away as I would have liked. And then we're going to um, set up the mount and scope using, in this case, one of these trees at infinity focus as uh, a target point. So I'm going to do that now and save you guys the time of watching me mess with the mount. Okay, so I've got it set up now. A couple things you're going to want to make sure. Uh, you want to make sure that the locking ring is steady and tight on the adapter. It's much easier if you uh, do this uh, with the arm sticking out to the side. Start here or on the other side. It makes no difference. We've made sure that our distal screws are nice and tight, nice and snug. And that's going to allow us to use this as a pivot point as we adjust the plane of the reticle using these screws. And now we'll see if we can look through the lens. And as you can see, the crosshairs are right over that tree in the dip there. So I'm going to use that as my point. It doesn't have to be terribly, terribly accurate, as long as it's very far away. But what does work as well, of course, is the um, corner of a building or uh, anything like that. So we'll start our setup here. So the first thing you would do, of course, set it up much like this, align it on your point, and then we're going to take the arm and we are going to rotate it 
180 degrees. Careful not to um, push on the adapter, the screws and whatnot. Uh, adjust it using the arm here. And then we're gonna look through the eyepiece and what will we see? Well, it looks like our tree has moved and the crosshairs are now hanging over the sky. So the trick here is you are going to use the thumb screws on the mount, the close ones. And what you're going to do is you're going to adjust things until that crosshair is halfway between the place it started, in my case, the top of that tree, and where it is now, the middle of nowhere. You don't adjust it all the way back, you just adjust it halfway. So I'm going to do that right now, and then we'll pick up once I've got her going. Okay, so I've adjusted it. And as we can see, those crosshairs are now closer to our collimation point, the top of that tree, but not all the way there, just about halfway. And the next thing we're gonna do, oh, that's bad. You know when you can see the mosquitoes, that they're big. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to realign that crosshair onto the top of that tree, way over here, not using the thumb screws. We're gonna go the other half of the way using the controls on the wedge. And then we're gonna flip the arm back over this way again. So again, I'll cut and do that and then we will uh, go from there. All right, so we now have it readjusted loosely back to the top of that tree. And again, we're gonna move this over here 180 degrees. And I'm going to look back through and see where it ended up. If I can get the phone to go that way. Oh, there we go. Okay, well, you can see it shifted a little bit, but it's again not where it should be. So we're going to do exactly the same thing that we just did. We're going to use the thumb screws to adjust it halfway between where it's ended up and where we want it to be on top of that tree. Again, over there. And then we'll go the other half of the way using the controls on the wedge. All right, I've saved us the trouble and I have realigned it back on our target point. Again, going halfway with the thumb screws and then halfway using the controls on the wedge. Now, since we're at this angle, one thing I want to point out is this hex screw right here. Uh, this hex screw actually controls the tension uh, in that axis. And so what you can do, um, if without any load on it, you find these to be quite stiff, which I am at the moment, you can actually loosen this hex screw. It'll loosen some of the tension and it will make it much easier to adjust. Just make sure that you uh, tighten it back up before you put any heavy loads on it because that uh, might cause the mount to slide forward into this position. But that can be used um, basically to get it in the sweet spot that you want it. So, as you might have expected by now, we swing the arm and one-handed, <laughs> we swing the arm back and then we, we can see after swinging the arm, oh, we're quite a bit closer. We only have to adjust it a little bit now. So, we'll wash, rinse, repeat. 
and adjust those thumb screws halfway, adjust the mount the rest of the way, and we'll see if we can get her collimated. So we've got everything adjusted once more, and we're gonna swing this arm, and we'll take a peek. Oh, and it looks like I didn't quite adjust it enough. So we'll give it a go one more time and hopefully we'll get collimation. All right, so I was joined by a couple of my furry friends who were ever so helpful and uh, rubbing up against the tripod, but we have got it aligned right about there as you can see and we're gonna see how we did and boom check at different points of the arc as we can see those crosshairs are pretty much staying right over that that tree or that alignment point. So that, folks, is a successful collimation. You want to make sure that when you've done that, that you have your uh, thumb screws nice and snug. Uh, you wouldn't want to be adjusting it now. You'd want to be looking through the eyepiece and uh, make sure that they stay uh, or that the uh, crosshairs stay in the same spot after you're done snugging these up. But we have successfully collimated our polar scope. And the sky is looking kind of okay. We got some haze and some clouds, so we'll see what tonight brings. But at least we know that our scope is good to go. Now, it's worth noting, you don't really want to be touching these now. However, you can loosen the uh, locking ring and remove the scope. Just make sure you hold it by the midsection here. And then store it carefully before putting it it back. Uh, you might require a little minor adjustment to your collimation. Um, you know, if you remove it and reapply it and whatnot, um, the screws can get bumped and, and what have you. But um, once you've got it mostly pretty good like this, uh, you can even do it on Polaris um, just to get a little minor adjustment. So that's how it works. That's how she goes. And Thanks for watching what is, I believe, the first video, first amateur video uh, as we take you through the usage of the Light Track 2.